With the 37th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots selected Kyle Duggar, a safety out of Division II Lenore Ryan University. And if you're anything like me, when you heard that pick, you were ready to Google a list of nearby therapists because Belichick decided to take yet another second round defensive back. However, after watching Kyle Duggar's film in detail, I think he might actually be able to break the curse. So here's the ultimate scouting report and film breakdown on Kyle Duggar. Now for those of you who don't know what Belichick's second round curse is, basically every second round defensive back Belichick has drafted in his entire career has ended up busting, except for one or two. This is not a pretty list. Anyways, let's get started with Duggar's profile. Kyle Duggar is 6 foot 2 inches, 220 pounds. At the combine, he posted some incredibly impressive numbers, showing off a 4.4940, 17 bench press reps, a 42 inch vertical, and an 11 foot 2 inch broad jump. His size and speed screams versatility. Now obviously Duggar is an extraordinary athlete, but that's not even what I like most about him. I love who he is as a person, because coming out of high school, Kyle Duggar was undersized and he didn't get a single offer to play Division 1, so he swallowed his pride and settled with Division 2 Lenore Ryan. At Lenore Ryan, Kyle Duggar grinded his way to becoming a defensive beast. On film, he seriously looks like a man among boys. Through hard work and a growth spurt at the lucky right time, he was able to select the Cliff Harris Award, which is the award given to the best defensive small school football player. Kyle Duggar has a really great story, so it's not hard to see why Belichick loved him. Now on film, the first thing that stands out about Kyle Duggar is his versatility. In all the film of Duggar I watched, he lined up in four major positions. A box or stick safety position near the first down marker to protect the first down. A single high safety, which means he was the last line of defense up top isolated. A linebacker, which means he was near the line ready to stop the run or cover a running back or tight end and even as a slot cornerback, which means he was lined up against a wide receiver inside. That kind of versatility seems to be a theme in Belichick's drafting strategy this year, so of course it started with the very first pick. Duggar was able to show a promising skill set between both the pass and the run games, so let's start with the sexier of the two, his pass defense. Watching some of Kyle Duggar's initial film, I was a little bit skeptical about his coverage against D2 guys. So when I saw him light up the senior bowl in pass coverage, I knew he was the real deal. Kyle Duggar spent a good chunk of snaps in man-to-man -man against Adam Troutman, who, if you don't know who that is, he was Pro Football Focus's highest-rated receiving tight end in this year's tight end class. From the very first snap of the game, Duggar showed the speed and hip fluidity to cover both tight ends and running backs step for step. There's a couple plays here that I really want to emphasize, starting with this one. This play has Kyle Duggar lined up as the Sam linebacker over Adam Troutman. His job is, again, just to play straight-up man-to-man -man coverage. Given that this is cover one man, Kyle Duggar's goal here is to play with outside leverage to funnel any deep seam routes into the safety helping up top. The route Troutman actually runs here is a deep crosser across the face of the cover one safety, which is a route that works pretty well against cover one, especially if it's a speedy receiver running it. Guys like Tyreek Hill have had a lot of production in the league with it, just because if the primary cover guy has outside leverage, the receiver can sneak through to the other side of the field and use the cover guy's leverage against him. Of course, the counter to the speed necessary from the receiver to do this is, well, more speed from the defensive back. Kyle Duggar does a great job of keeping his hips square to the last possible moment, and then he makes a little bit of contact with Troutman, and he stays with him step for step right on his back hip. This is perfect form, by the way. The QB throws a pretty decent ball to Troutman, actually, because he throws the Troutman's leverage, but Kyle Duggar does a phenomenal job of getting his arm over Troutman's arm and blocking him from finishing the catch. This specific technique is a technique that the Pats love from their defensive backs. Now this next play was easily my favorite Kyle Duggar play on film. Once again, Kyle Duggar is lined up at Sam Linebacker straight up over Troutman, and he's playing straight man to man. Adam Troutman's route is a flat route. Now there's a receiver here lined up in a tight split, so when he comes up, he's going to act like a natural pick to try to slow down Kyle Duggar just enough to fall behind maybe a step or two, and that's all it should take. Because if Troutman's a step or two ahead, he should be able to get the edge and get a touchdown. Now, Duggar is a little bit slow to start off here, but because of his absurd explosiveness, he manages to catch up, and he ultimately brings Troutman down short of the goal line. Looking at the actual tackle, though, is what impressed me. Duggar not only wraps up Troutman, but he's also able to get his hand on the ball and basically tackle the ball. Troutman can't extend the ball over the goal line because of this, and it reminded me a lot of a play that Patrick Chung made against Jesse James in the 2016 AFC Championship. 
Despite all that I like about Kyle Duggar in the past game, he definitely does not come without his flaws. And these flaws mainly stem from his lack of competition in college, which kind of allowed him to get a little bit bored, sloppy, and complacent really. For example, I noticed that he could sometimes seem a little too eager to open his hips early, especially in off-man coverage, which he could afford to do because he just could out-athlete whatever D2 receiver he was covering. In this play, for example, he's in man coverage with inside leverage, and his hips are immediately open to the outside the whole time. The receiver running an in-cut turns him around, and that would get him destroyed in the NFL. I don't even think this is really a technique issue, because we've seen his ability to cover in man-to-man earlier. I just think this is an example of him not being totally mentally present during the play. Another criticism I have of Kyle Duggar in the past game is that he does basically what I do when I play intramural flag football. In my college flag football league, I'll occasionally play single high safety, and all I do is read the quarterback's eyes and react to that. I react to wherever the quarterback is reading instead of trying to read the offensive personnel and formation for myself. It works fine when you play against lower level quarterbacks like D2 QBs, or in my case, Jimothy from Organic Chemistry class, but it kind of just shows Kyle Duggar's strategy was more reactive than proactive, and that strategy doesn't work against NFL quarterbacks who will look you off like crazy. In the NFL, you need to have done your film homework, and you need to know what to expect on Sundays. You need to be able to read your keys and know how to react to them. Now, this play right here shows this idea perfectly. Kyle Duggar is lined up at box safety and zone coverage, and he gets caught trying to read the quarterback's eyes instead of analyzing the route pattern and the developing crosser in front of him. Because of that, he's a tad late. But again, his athleticism allows him to just zoom over to the receiver. Now, he gets a lucky pick here, and the burst to take it to the house is awesome, of course. But again, this won't fly in the league when it's a faster game. Now, aside from these flaws, he had a few miscommunications in the Senior Bowl. I'm not going to go into too much detail into those because those were two isolated incidents with a group of people he's never played with before. But it's definitely important for me to mention at the very least. Let's shift gears now and talk about his production against the run. Kyle Duggar's size allows him to get near the line, get down and dirty, and take on some bigger blockers. And when it comes to taking on those bigger blockers, Duggar has some pretty good technique. I love how well he uses his hands to engage and to release off the block on his own terms, as well as how relatively accurate his hand placement is. He's usually the one to get hands inside first. He shows some good play strength and technique the whole time, and he's a fairly safe player against the run in general. This really isn't too much of a surprise considering run defense is one of the first traits Belichick looks for in a defender. He wants his defensive backs especially to be able to tackle dependably. Another aspect of Duggar's game that I absolutely love is his constant presence near the finish of the play. He does what I call quote-unquote meeting the pile. When you're watching safety film in general, it's pretty easy to get bored for like 90% of the plays because they're usually not involved in the play. In fact, you can barely even see them on screen. Safeties are the last line of defense. So one thing that I really love to see from a safety is when they go out of their way to get themselves involved. When a safety consistently displays a high motor to sort through trash and to clean up plays, I get really excited. Now obviously his effort didn't always lead to a tackle, but he still showed off his motor really well. Duggar almost always made an effort to at least be around the finish, and that's a huge positive for him in my book. Now the next few plays were plays that I felt were really important to mention when talking about Kyle Duggar's flaws in the run game. In his game against Tusculum, I noticed a really weird missed tackle. It just seemed uncharacteristic. Duggar is lined up as a stick safety in the middle of the field, and he does a great job of seeing the run play develop, and he even identifies the cutback lane correctly and approaches it. But he doesn't do a great job of filling it and finding enough depth. He tries to square up, but he's shooting like a missile, and he's not really in control of his body, so he isn't able to actually square up his hips to make a proper tackle. He gets a little too aggressive and just tries to go for a highlight blow him up play for loss of a yard instead of just a safe wrap around for a one yard gain. And as a result, he just flat out whiffs. He throws his upper body and his lower body, no control. Now I wish his troubles in cleaning up cutback lanes like that were an isolated incident, but it happened again in the senior bowl. In this play, Kyle Duggar is a sandbacker again, protecting the backside of the line. He does his job decently well, and again, he identifies the cutback lane correctly and tries to fill it, but again, he isn't deep enough in the lane, so he doesn't have the angle to cut off the inside juke. 
Now, most importantly here, I want you to notice how his feet stop. And so he tries to catch the running back with his upper body, kind of launching it. But he also tries to let the running back come to him instead of meeting the running back halfway. And because of that, he has no counter momentum to be able to balance against the running back's momentum. And as a result, he gives up five yards on this play where he really should have given up zero. Now, miraculously on the next play, he gets a chance for redemption. It's important for me to mention that, yes, the running back doesn't have full momentum since he had to redirect from the defensive tackle. And yes, the defensive tackle probably made this play happen more. But the reason I'm showing this play is because everything Duggar did wrong on the last few plays, he does right here. This time, Duggar compresses his lane. He gets some really good depth. And because he's so far beyond the line of scrimmage and he's pressing the running back so hard, running back can't really have the angle to cut back anymore. Duggar also makes sure to keep his feet adjusting and moving, so he doesn't have to launch his upper body at the runner to try to tackle. He finishes completely. Because of this, he's able to keep his hips square to the back, and he's able to wrap around and finish the play like a damn missile. He shows flashes of polish like this quite a bit, so if he's able to start making plays like this more consistently and under more control instead of just depending on raw athleticism, there's a lot of promise for him in the box. Last and definitely not least, Kyle Duggar has decent special teams upside. He returned kicks in college pretty well, granted it was against D2, but he also had a pretty great return in the senior bowl as well. In this play, he shows some pretty good vision to find the lane, and he shows some great balance to survive a shoestring tackle attempt. However, as a whole, as you can see in this play, he's not super shifty. He won't make guys miss immediately or create his own lanes right away, but if he does have a clean lane to begin with, and if he can get some momentum, he's definitely a returner that can explode for a few extra yards. Duggar is definitely a person I'd look for as a returner at some point during the season for the Patriots, so keep your eyes out for that. So that's basically everything you need to know about Kyle Duggar and his history on film. There's still a couple things worth mentioning. The first thing is that people still might not be sold on him because of his age. He's 24, which is pretty old for a prospect, or his lack of competition. And you know what? That's totally fair. However, I will say Duggar had a great senior bowl against some of the best competition he possibly could have faced. He's shown that he can hang with the big boys, so I'm not too, too worried about that personally. Now, as far as his future role on the Patriots goes, Kyle Duggar really is a Swiss Army knife. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him take snaps at single high safety, strong safety, or even at linebacker. However, I think he'll shine the best in Patrick Chung's current role, blanketing the opponent's number one tight end. Kyle Duggar is still developmental in my opinion. I don't see him starting week one, but his snap count will definitely start to go up each week slowly by slowly until he finally becomes a fairly regularly presence in the defense about midway to 75% through the season. Kyle Duggar has potential to be part of the new Patriots wave of smaller, younger, and faster linebackers. Duggar with Josh Uche could result in a new linebacking core that might actually be able to keep up with Lamar's RPOs and read options on the ground and Mahomes' weird slot angle throws in the air. And I'm sure Belichick definitely had those two offenses in mind when drafting Duggar and designing his draft. With that said, I really do think Kyle Duggar could break the second round curse. But for now, all we can do is wait and see. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for a scouting report on Josh Uche next. Also, a lot of work went into this. I took over 12 pages of notes, research, and scouting. I'd really appreciate a like or a sub. Peace.